more DG Sanji drama, baby! The world was not ready for me to keep milking this, and yet I kept milking it. Kept milking it! My my friend, my homie, <laughs> some ordinary gamers, my podcast co-host, beautiful man, was put on a hit list, and we worry for his life. Uh... <laughs> Let's freaking go, baby. They're so mad. No fury like mine. The fact that they are so mad at my my boy Mudahar. <laughs> they put him on a freaking head list, baby. It's crazy that they, they thought this was a good idea. Um, uh, Pretty awesome stuff, all in all. <laughs> so more than you, we game mode, Mudahar. Mudahar! Dude, it's crazy. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's not every day you wake up and you get put on a little hit list. Dude, Black that's awesome, dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude, DG Sanji, they came for him. They came for him! Yeah, they excluded me on the hit list, which I think is hilarious, personally, um, because I think my content was awesome. <laughs> like, boss, why are you not on the hit list? Listen, listen, there are a couple possibilities. Either one, I fell off. Very possible. Um, very possible. I got millions of views on my videos on this and made lots of money, so I'm not complaining. But if you notice, the people on this hit list, okay, whatever, we're gonna do some, this is amazing, all right? So anyone that, that's making fun of DG Sanji gets put on the hit list. But if you look at the hit list, it's people that they covered it like Charlie and uh, Mudahar, Asmongold, people outside of the uh, of the actual community, all right? Then you got people like Hero Hey, Coefficient, Evanito, Kenji, people that aren't exact. Like Hero Hey is obviously known for his commentary, but Coefficient, Evanito, and Kenji not really known for their commentary. They don't just go like absolutely crazy ham on people. They also have like False Eyed and Kyo, but they're news people. They're not crazy commentary people that are gonna annihilate dudes. Hero Hey makes two minute videos, and I guess whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, that's option two. Option three, it's a psyop. And I made the hit list. And uh, this hit list wasn't actually made by any enemy, per se. <laughs> it was made by someone on the actual light side of the force that just wanted to make Niji Sanji look even stupider. Eh? Did you even consider that a little bit? God damn it. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's not every day you wake up and you get put on a little <laughs> hit list, blacklist, whatever you want to call it. Now, normally I was always under the impression that the first time I get put on any kind of a naughty list would be on the dark web. You know, typically because- Yeah, right, of... dude, and it's just VTuber fans. Dude, it's so funny to me watching people that are not in the VTuber community. And, like, <laughs> people not in the VTuber community are just like, Dude, looking at this dumpster fire. Dark web browsing, deep web browsing. You know, you the, the stuff you do on a Sunday when you get a nice bowl of cereal oh, and you yeah. look at all the fake Hitman website that exist. Now, of course, about two weeks ago, I covered a story in regards to a big, big VTuber agency known as Niji Sanji. Good stuff. And how they were incredibly unprofessional in regards to one of their talents. Unprofessional. Yeah, it was so unprofessional when they, uh, they caused their talent to try to kill themselves two times. Very unprofessional of them. <laughs> Who has since quit and basically, uh, you know, re-sparked her old retired persona, Doki Bird, as an absolute champion in this business. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I looked at this situation as objectively as yeah, possible. Yeah, he was pretty good about it. To be it. real with you, I'm no, not- That's my favorite thing. Like, they didn't actually cover the, the actual shit flingers that'll send hate their way on that blacklist. Like, it's the most pussy shit blacklist in the world. Like, dude, listen. Rev says Desu and I, we have our disagreeances, okay? Like, I'm not going to make believe we don't. But the fact that they didn't include the two of us, the two people that are petty enough to actually, like, really shit on these guys, <laughs> is amazing. It's like, all right, we're going to make a blacklist, but we're not going to call anyone out that might actually be dangerous. <laughs> I, they, there is no way in hell they expected Muda to make a video on this, that's for sure. Not super interested in Japanese idol culture, VTuber, anime stuff. Obviously, I'm not really into that. What I am into is bad business practices. And obviously, you know, I've worked in this business, not the VTuber stuff, but I've worked in, you know, sort of the YouTube adjacent in industries, the media stuff. And when you get businesses abusing actual talent, yeah, at that point, it's not, you know, simple, goofy, haha, yeah. you know, high school dear drama. No, it's, it's not internet drama anymore. It's threats and Crimes. I, I think people, whenever they see me milking this uh, drama, they're like, oh, Nux, just here milking the drama. 
I think getting this information out is as important as it possibly could be. Uh, I think it's literally imperative that anyone in this community talks about it as much as they want to or can. Uh, because it's important that people know what they're getting into when they're signing these literally soul-binding contracts. Uh, like, I think that, uh, this, it's not drama. Yes, it's farming, but it's not just drama. It's important, and it, lives are changed through this stuff. You know, if Doki Bird wouldn't have talked about this publicly, and no one would have actually covered this, and people didn't know about this, the next wave of people that are joining Niji Sanji are very likely just gonna be in the same goddamn boat as she was. It's the massive discussion about this that, you know, I'm not saying I'm saving lives here, because let's be honest, I'm probably not, um, but the buzz and the talking about it might prevent people from being in a really bad, bad situation that they wish they would have been warned about before joining. But that's actual criminal situations we're getting into. So, of course, this is a website that's since been taken down about the bandwagoners. The bandwagoners. <laughs> Dude, that's me. I only made 14 videos on Niji Sanji so far, so <laughs> listen. So, of course, that's not enough. So, this list that I'm put into is basically done by an unhinged nut job. And I mean unhinged in about the, 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 the most blunt way possible, okay? If you make a list like this, you you got you got to you got to you got to you got to be eating some of the loony pills so to speak, right? Or or I made the list as a psyop to make fun of Niji Sanji. I just masqueraded as a Niji fan and made the list. Or I'm not saying that I did, but like I could have. I could have. I also love how the list is not uh not including people like, again like I mentioned like me or Rev but also not including people like legal mindset like actual lawyers or anyone that, that actually has any sort of power <laughs> it's like dude it's the most pussy shit list in the world whoever came up with that me <clears throat> not me I did not make the list with my own two hands I don't I don't know how to do that I hire people for that stuff if I would have done it I would have hired someone is what I meant to say I did, no the list had nothing to do with me but if it did if it was a psyop like holy shit that's smart I'm just saying Right? So, of course, you got indies, merch, artists that support Doki or Doki Bird, selling, whatever you want to call it. And, of course, they mentioned individuals. Watch Twitter try to blame you for the list now. I like to talk in as many, uh, as many question marks and uncertainties as possible, just so that people could get upset at me for that, too. It makes, it makes life a little more interesting. It makes life a little fun. I didn't make the list. But maybe it was a psyop, I'm just saying. And maybe I thought of the idea. And maybe I asked someone to do it. I probably didn't. Okay, and the YouTuber streamers. Oh, the streamers. Categories. Now, one of the chief uh, targets of the hitmen right here. This is like a, <laughs> this is like a much lamer version of the Hogwarts Legacy shit, where they uh, they used to remember when Hogwarts Legacy came out. They made like the whole uh, streamer harassment Google Doc, where every streamer that played Hogwarts Legacy, you could go and harass people and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> like this is that on just a much more pathetic scale everyone saw how much hate the people got for the the hogwarts legacy stuff so i just figured hey pretty great idea for a uh niji sanji hater to make this list just to make them look even stupider i'm just saying i'm just saying i didn't think of something like this but like i'm just saying is Kiyomaru, okay, who wrote, I hate Niji Sanji. Oh, Not it's over to the gulag with him. Obviously, this is such a, such a, such a harsh thing to be saying. Now, look, I... Next Twitter cancellation. Nux made the list. Don't support him. No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't want to sit here and pretend like this blacklist... I fell off, remember? Not going to include me in that. I'm not taking it seriously. There might... This is a multi-billion dollar industry, okay? Yeah, but the list is made by... Even if it wasn't made by me, it was made by some fucking idiot. Who knows? Maybe I might actually be cutting business uh, oppor- Wait, wait, there's a clip of Nux saying he made the list? No, no, I didn't say it in certain terms. Come on, man. It's basically done by an unhinged nut job. And I mean unhinged in about the, 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 the most blunt way possible, okay? If you make a list like this, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, oh. you gotta, you gotta be eating some of the loony pills, so to speak, right? Or- or I made the list. That was hypothetical. As a psyop to make fun of Niji Sanji, I just masqueraded as a Niji fan and made the list. Or I'm not saying that I did, but like I could have. I could have. I also love how the list is not. Uh... See, it has nothing damning, no damning evidence. The clip is a fraud. I'm just saying, no damning evidence. We're safe.
opportunities for myself in the future. But if it means taking a stand against an actual degenerate company, then absolutely, I think that's a stand Based. worth taking. Based. So, of course, they started to mention other creators like False ID. No! Dreamachu. And, of even, course, Tectone. I, I don't even know who Dreamachu is, but no! Who's been, in our, who's been in our podcast twice, by the way, okay? You know, True, I little... we just had Tectone on the podcast again. Well, that was a great episode. God damn it. A little bit of a, I have a little bit of soft spot there, but of course you can see other people that they brought in. People like Moist Critical, Woo! Penguin Zero, and then some ordinary. The most shittily made list of all time. Honestly, I feel like the reason why they uh, didn't include me is because I'm not really on Twitter anymore. Like I, I was before, I was giving all these g reasons, but bro, I just think it's because I'm not really on Twitter. They just scrolled through their Twitter tab to see who who's around, and that's what they included on the list. Airy gamers, Moodog. Ooh. This man just orgasm song, seeing himself on a hit list. Sees himself on a hit list, comes all over the place. Asmund Gold, you got Hero Hey, Coefficient, Evanito, and Kenji. Oh no, no, not those guys. <laughs> God damn. Now I made one one video on the situation in comparison to a lot of people in the V. Oh shit! Oh god! Oh no! He's calling me out. YouTuber industry in the VTuber world who've made several videos. Okay, we're talking like, you know, 10 episode se uh, seasons <laughs> of what the fuck is going on with me. <laughs> no, no. E.G. Sanji. I mean, he knows, he knows. In one video, one teeny tiny video, no, and I'm no. suddenly brought into the old blacklist. Now, of course, do I necessarily care if Niji Sanji is, uh, you know, blacklisting me or if the fans of it are? No, absolutely not. Unless the fans of Niji Sanji that blacklisted you were just one very petty conniving piece of shit on the internet that name rhymes with Lord Schmuxenor as a psyop to make the fans look even stupider than they are. See, I'm just saying someone's gonna believe me and I am literally gonna get hate for it and I am waiting and ready. You've also got artists and merch designers who... <laughs> merch designers? You know, just... Oh my god, that's so stupid. ...literally wanted to cut ties, and they've all been listed in this situation. At this point, I really think if you get... <laughs> this person suspended called Niji Loser. Thank you. Put into a list like this, it's like basically a badge of honor in that you're doing the right thing in life somewhere, yes. okay? Then you've got other corporations, no. CEOs, people that probably also will not give a shit about this situation. And then obviously they've got an etc. <laughs> Just random people. We don't have any reasons why these guys are getting banned, but like uh, these guys. <laughs> That's why I think that whoever came up with this is literally just um, just random. Whatever whoever they see on Twitter, and I'm not on Twitter, so they didn't include me. That that's what I think. No, who the most likely. Um, I, I again, I think this is all stupid bullshit, and there's nothing to fear. It's just funny that Niji fans or Niji haters that are making believe they're fans pulled this up. But they got follow <laughs> the etc. blacklist category. No! <laughs> I love how absolutely no one is listening to this. Literally, no one is listening to any of this shit. Oh man, I, I love how Mood is finally getting a taste for the absolute insanity of the VTuber community. I used to bring up VTuber stuff on the podcast, and Mood would be like, Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Anyway, and Last podcast, okay, dude, you should have heard the one we just recorded. Oh my god, we go nutto. Dude, this, this, this is an unhinged organization, Jesus Christ. Dude, you didn't see some artists that were like put on this list, they made tweets saying, I don't know why, but I just got a lot of followers from somewhere. Where did they come from? And it's just people just following everyone on the list. It's like the ultimate shout out. Which is something that would be really cool for someone who's actually a friend. Huh, interesting, interesting. Interesting. It seems like the only people that have to gain from making a list like this are the people that hate Niji Sanji. Hmm. Nice. Now, something that I kind of want to talk about, and I think the actual big story here, is the parasocial relationships that have been built around companies. And it's not just VTuber stuff. You know, just for context sake, even if you put it in like the... Bro, Muda having his wife as his phone wallpaper is so fucking based and awesome. God, I love this man. <laughs> Dude, I paused at the worst time ever. Gaming industry, for instance, you know, fanboys of certain gaming industry, gaming publishers, uh, companies like Nintendo, Sony, Xbox, 
fans of anything. I'm honestly happy he's talking about this and making that the discussion because, dude, why are you fans of these companies? They only like you for your wallet. They don't care about you at all. They literally don't give a crap about you. They made Megamind 2, for God's sake, and it was awful. They don't care about you even a little bit. And especially when it's so parasocially attached, end up doing unhinged, downright cringy behavior like this. Now, obviously for big companies like this and even creators, being parasocial with your fans is a, literally it's a net positive, okay? It's of course, obviously, it gives you more money. You just see more relatable and they give you money. I say, oh, Chad, I totally care about you. Wow, you guys are awesome. I love you. I love you guys. I love you. And then you guys give me money, okay? Like, obviously, there's a reason why I want to be parasocial. And it's why I don't really do that. It's not my thing. I'm lucky enough to make enough money through YouTube ads. Anyone that wants to support me could support me. And I'm going to pull this parasocial bullshit to try to manipulate the fuck out of you. Now, I really do love you guys, though. But, but still, like, I'm just saying. One of the reasons there is no Megamind sequel in Ba Sing Se. That's why like Minecraft YouTubing is like legitimately so up yeah, there. I was gonna think of them. I was literally th thanks for the sub, Leo. You were misproving my point, but thank you. Um, but uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, the point that I've tried to make is there is because the actual personalities have like this literal cult-like, uh, you know, relationship with the people that watch them, and, and they make so much money. They're just sitting there and they're like, "I love you, kittens." That's what Dream had, like, that's why he got into all that controversy, because he had this weird relationship with his viewers. Dude, don't have relationships with your viewers unless you're trying to milk money out of them. And viewers, stop having relationships with streamers and companies, especially companies. Like, streamers, at least they're people. Companies are soulless, mindless, faceless motherfuckers. They, they literally don't care about you. Any, don't trust them at all. Don't love them. God. And same for companies like Niji Sanji. At the surface level, if you're me and you Thanks look for the kiss, boss chat. I'm literally I'm please stop. Nux, Nux dick kissing ASMR when. Literally go away. At a company like this, you think of a billion dollar publicly traded you know talent agency, okay? Literally a company that would have been found in hell for crying out loud. <laughs> and that's all you look at them like, right? You look at them as literally a faceless uh, talent agency. But for a lot of these fans, they're looking at them like, this is their dad. This is their it's mom. So this sad. is like it's a- It's awful. Like people have this weird relationship with Genshin Impact. Like you insult Genshin Impact and they are like personally offended because they have a personal relationship with, you know, the Genshin Impact, which I think is the biggest casino in the world, okay? G literally, okay? You can enjoy the game. I'm not telling you not to enjoy the game. People enjoy casinos. But, but like, come on, man. They don't care about you at all. At all. And people are in love with Niji Sanji, fans of Niji Sanji. And here's the thing. I've been literally getting shit for a year from people that support Niji Sanji. I've been getting shit because I've been supporting Sayu. I've supported, uh, I support lots of people that I think that are in a rough spot. Like, bro, bro, bro. They've been coming for me like I'm, I'm murdering their puppies. A family Actually, member, which is- He's gonna say vindication. I'm not gonna say vindication. It's outright one of the most unhealthy relationships. But I'm just talking about the people that are so like obscenely and obsessed in love with this company. So you can have. However, for a company like Niji Sanji, that's literally their bread and butter. For a big talent agency, for a big YouTuber agency, for a big like esports agency. I, honestly, I think that's the direction a lot of agencies are gonna move. Like for example, and I know this is a stupid example, and I'm really glad that Muda turned this into the discussion point. You have uh, Wendy's, okay? Wendy's nuts in your mouth. Okay, we get it. Uh, what, Mendy's, all right? Mendy's, Wendy's, Wendy's. Freaking chain of restaurants, okay? Remember when Wendy's became all personal and released the, the Wendy waifu and, and started having all these weird personalities and get, got fans because of it? Opera GX has its personality, has a VTuber, has all that. And I like Aura, the GX VTuber. But like, dude, the fact that every company is trying to become relatable, hip, and cool now and trying to actually develop fans of the company, not just the company's product. Like, they're seeing what YouTubers are doing and the crazy relationship that YouTubers have with their audience, and all of a sudden, Kentucky Fried Chicken releases a dating simulator, all right? Like, that's where the whole silence brand meme came from, but slowly slowly and surely, they are wheedling their way into your lives and into your hearts, trying to make some sort of fan base of themselves. Chat, every single one of you here listening to me now, these companies don't care about you at all. 
at least he YouTubers or streamers are at least somewhat human. <laughs> Maybe not fully, but at least somewhat human. And have somewhat of a moral compass maybe if they don't play too much minecraft like dude i've been seeing what's been going on over there it's it's crazy over there but like dude these companies don't even have that that semblance of humanity in them and people are in love with them you insult niji sanji and like they're they're upset at you like you insulted their friend like dude niji sanji is as corrupt as they come that parasocial connection is ultimately the most important thing. It's why sports teams are successful. It's why political parties can be successful. Parasocial stuff is always a positive. If you want to make a lot of money and you want to make a big connection, you want to be literally uncancelable, you want to get away. Well, or super cancelable. I think that it is a bit of a double-edged sword. I think that having an army of fans that are parasocially attached to you by your constant discussions with them you're gonna end up getting canceled. You're gonna get a little too close to a fan and it's gonna be bad. Uh, I think that that's also dangerous for a completely other reason. Hey, with absolutely the worst activities imaginable, foster those, you know, parasocial relationships. It's ethically damning, sure, but in a case like this, when you see lists, this is why they're made. It's because somebody unhinged, right? Is in love has with the company. Actually in love with the company. It's crazy, wild. Don't love anything without a butthole, all right? This is this is a lesson that has been taught to me and drilled into me for a very long time. If it doesn't have a butthole, it's not to be loved. Yeah, use that, use that. Created a list because they have this parasite. See, streamers, one in four are probably bad people. Companies, one in four won't try to murder you. Social connection to the Niji Sanji uh, team, the Niji Sanji Corporation, or, you know, somebody under their talent umbrella. And to understand, this whole situation basically started because the actual corporation was incredibly unprofessional in regards to one of their talents. Get unprofessional. Like, actually outright evil. Now, I'm not going to say who's right or wrong. That's obviously for a court to decide. And I don't even think this court between Doki Bird and Niji Sanji will actually go through. Agreed. In most cases. Agreed. I think they're going to settle out of court too. Like, uh, and I spoke to Legal Mindset about this also, the lawyer guy that's been covering all this. And yeah, the chances that this goes to court are super duper slim. If it does go to court, it will be a trial of the century. It will actively create something absolutely insane. Um... Like, this will be the legal precedent for contractual obligations of international lawsuits going forward if this actually goes to court. This will be a historical event that will be referenced in hundreds of future court cases, but I doubt it will actually go to court. Um, if it does, laws will literally be created. So yeah, it's probably gonna get settled. You know, a lawyer that we spoke to, Legal Mindset, who we actually had on the podcast- Ah, oh, he leaked it, I didn't know! <laughs> no! I, I, well, anyway, uh, our next podcast episode on the So Ordinary Podcast will be featuring Legal Mindset. <laughs> well, I, well, I guess that's public now. Very recently, the episode's still in processing. It's still on the cutting yeah, they're editing it now. room floor. Had told us that most of these things usually end up in an actual situation where they just go through uh, settlements, right? I didn't leak it. I said I spoke to him. I didn't say he was on the podcast. Oh, Legal Mindset leaked it too? Okay, I'm just behind. All right, I guess. Okay, dude, everyone's there. All right, all right, okay. Because nobody really wants to go through the actual economic- Nuggets introduced Legal Mindset to Fifi. So I spoke to Fifi. She's having a bit of a law issue. She needs a lawyer with something, but she doesn't need a lawyer like Legal Mindset. Uh, I spoke to her about her problem that she's been having, and uh, she needs a lawyer that deals with other sectors impact uh specifically for the side you know that's not the big corporation with billions of dollars Ooh. yeah they end up getting Ooh. absolutely destroyed all they can hope for is a settlement and a big win god i love when billion dollar corporations get treated better by the law damn don't you love how the legal system works isn't that fun public court of opinion now of course when you looked at niji sanji basically talk about like their talent in such a disrespectful term i believe even for selling if we're going to go back to that video they said that her termination would really have no financial impact. No, 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 they didn't say no financial. They said the financial results will be negligible, which is my favorite word because they were anything but negligible. But by the fact that they, let me just say, if Niji Sanji says that the impact is negligible, then they don't mind the videos I make on it because it will not impact them. They said it themselves, which is why I will keep milking this drama until the horse is dry. I don't know why the horse is the one giving me the milk in this metaphor. 
I've been watching too many Vosh exposed videos, I guess. And around that day, their stock price literally plummeted. <laughs> but obviously, if you're looking at it, and this is why I don't look at these stock prices super duper seriously, they're fun to meme on, but obviously they're still on the rebound. That's how corporations Crazy. and companies Absolutely work. Absolutely insane. Drama. Drama happens. Literal insane shit goes down. Stock is just on the rebound. Hope you invested in the dip. Fuck, I'm gonna invest in Niji Sanji. Holy shit. I have to send that to my account. It's actually really fucking smart, not gonna lie. Like, I don't like the company. I don't think it has much of a future, but it's definitely gonna bounce back a little. Honestly, the moment they start washing their hands full of, full of the- full, Like, full I, I was waiting for all their responses to stop. Cause once they stop responding and feeding the fire, like bro, that, so time to invest. To not legal advice. But <laughs> full of the uh, full of the problem, they walk on, they're done. All right. Usually after a month, these things end up rebounding and the world moves on. As sad as that ends up basically sounding. Now, when it comes to a lot of these organizations, I kind of look at them also like YouTube MCNs, these like, uh, you know, your VTuber yeah. talent agency. I, I definitely see the comparison he's making here between the, the VTuber talent agencies and MCNs. Like the comparison makes sense to me, but it's it's a very different game. All right, we'll see what he says about this because this video is recorded obviously after our podcast with Legal Mindset. Now, you know, in retrospect, when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. There are people to this day that if they want to get into the VTuber game, they will right now sign up with Niji Sanji, even with all of the yeah, bad. That, that is something we talked about a lot in the podcast, for sure. Press they have on them. Because what these companies basically do is they go to individuals with no social platform whatsoever, and they basically say, hey, listen, instead of getting Here's a million subscribers for free, all you have to do is give us your soul and kidney you know, two viewers on average, you can sign on with us today. And by this afternoon, you can get 20,000 viewers. Sure, the money you'll be making will be increased. We'll probably end up making more money off of you than you'll actually see yourself. You know, if let's oh, say yeah. these companies- <laughs> Please, they make 2% off merch sales and 0% off sponsors. Like let's not make believe that, <laughs> that this is mostly beneficial for them make a million dollars a year off of one person and that person ends up through their shitty contract only getting a hundred thousand dollars a year to that person who's never had this you know paycheck before yep. that's a yep. big enough paycheck for them and they'll be willing to take it and run away with it yeah, we, we heavily talked about this shit in the uh the upcoming podcast episode uh, dude but yeah he's on the mark he's on the mark uh, this is what we people would still join Niji Sanji today despite the media shitstorm they would still join Niji Sanji today some people love streaming some people love VTubing some people cannot afford a four thousand dollar VTuber model on their first day of streaming uh, and they can't and they will love it that's their dream that's their passion they absolutely love the they absolutely love making content um how are they gonna do that well an easy way to do it is get a free VTuber model for $4,000 VTuber model that they're just gonna get for free. Yeah, sure, they're not gonna pay up money from sponsors or merch. It's not like they're doing that anyway. And they are going to join Niji Sanji and do that thing. Niji Sanji is never gonna run out of people willing to join them because it will always give them a platform. It will always have people talk about them. And in worst case, they can always leave. And every time whoever leaves Niji Sanji ends up with such a crazy, weird bump in hype and viewership. Um, a lot of people keep saying, but what if they sign the contract? You don't understand. You don't understand. Yes, they sign an awful contract, but look at the benefits for them. They are somebody who's working in McDonald's. They are making 12 bucks an hour and being treated like shit by their manager, okay? They love VTubing. They love streaming. They want a VTuber model that they can't afford. They want to spend eight hours a day streaming, and they don't have those eight hours a day because they're working in McDonald's to pay fucking rent, all right? Yes, the contract will take advantage of them. The contract will absolutely take advantage of them. However, they're already being taken advantage of in McDonald's. So here they get a $4,000 VTuber model for free. They're able to stream eight hours a day, literally playing video games all day, every day, instead of working in McDonald's. And yes, they'll only make $50,000 a year instead of the freaking, I don't know, $200,000 a year that they should be making because Niji Sanji is taking all that cuts but that's still 50K. That's still 50K. People would join Niji Sanji today. Even with all this drama and shit going on, they would still go join today. And pe people in chat are like, but why? The contract is bad. Yes, the contract is bad. Yes, they'll be taken advantage of. But their lives still might be less shitty than they would be. Does that make sense? Like, I would never join it. But then again, look, at I'm I'm a pretty s relatively successful YouTuber. Not, not fucking Mr. Beast. 
but I'm probably making more money than anyone in EG Sanji. Just because I don't give all these cuts to other people. Like, for reference. And obviously, if you pitch to somebody, listen, in the influencer space, we can get you past that luck barrier. Remember, to become a social media influencer, I, I will say the hardest barrier of entry is luck, okay? It doesn't matter how good your content looks, how good you are, how funny you can be. Uh, look, content is very important. If you make good content for a long enough time, eventually it might pick up. But it takes time and effort and money and, and a lot of practice to get to that point where you're actually making really good content that's better than all your competition. You probably aren't going to be making content better than all of your competition. That's why not everyone is a successful YouTuber, okay? Your content, when you start off, when you have low-budget shit, is probably not going to be good. And if you don't have good content, how the hell could you compete? Your only hope is luck. And Niji Sanji takes luck out of the equation because they give you a platform with a million followers on day one. If you don't get lucky by being blessed through the algorithm, then this whole thing can ultimately be a bust for you. You could put hours of your life into it and it will take you years to see the fruits of those labors, if even at all, kick in. And so if a company like this comes out, even as evil as they seem, you probably will just sign a deal with the devil. Literally, it is like signing a deal with <laughs> the devil is. just so you can bypass that that luck barrier. I don't know, bro. Hassan says that it's pretty hard though, streaming. I'm just a, you know, dumb idiot uh, with a Twitch stream who who is live reacting to the news and trying to make sense of everything as it's ongoing. I usually have a policy of not covering breaking news. Huh? Why did you fucking lie? Like, I don't know. I think working in an Amazon warehouse is like, like, at, le at least it's not streaming. Am I right, guys? Like, did you see how Hassan said that streaming is literally a harder job? Like, let's not for, let's not forget to take that into account and hopefully get the dream job you've always craved. Now, obviously, I think a good discussion people are having, you know, even if you don't look at it as just a VTuber organization, is a talent agency that apparently seems to take advantage of individuals. And this happens in the entire business whatsoever. You know, it's one of the reasons yep. why I have respect for, yep. you know, Charlie, who owns a company. I believe it's the Human uh, Media Group. And it th it's now Mana Talent, but yeah, and they did a really good job. Through that company, they do the absolute that they can. The Saved my ass, that's for sure. To assist new talent, to foster them. You know, instead of trying to basically enslave your talent and become abusive to them, it's- But like, that's so much more financially beneficial though. Like, let's be real here. Niji Sanji makes more than mana talent. It's about fostering them so they can end up growing, spreading their wings. Boo! Boo! Own the scrubs! No, I'm just kidding. I'm obviously joking here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're gonna take me out of context. Twitter, stop it, it was sarcasm. And ultimately making a mark in the world and ultimately taking you with them, at least name-wise, as they mature throughout the world, right? That's kind of the whole goal of these situations. Now, obviously yeah, need- Dude, it's... talent management, you need to give them something more than your brand name and take money, okay? It's, it's such a awful and stupid idea that everyone thinks they need managers and they need to join things. Now, managers could help if they're really fucking good. I would not trust a manager for my content unless they are absolute masters of content, okay? That's the only time I would trust an actual manager, when they understand the content grind themselves and they can actually help me. One of the things that a lot of um, up and coming people like try that are trying to make content do fail at is just knowing how to make content correctly, knowing how what content to make, knowing how to make that content, knowing how to market or package that content so that their personality can shine, um, properly be treated in a way that they could focus on their content and all the back end behind the scenes kind of gets put on the side. Like, these are things that talent agencies should actually be helping with. These are things that Niji Sanji didn't do. They gave you a model, they told you, now stream as much as you can and we'll take as much money as we can. We're not helping with any of this shit. Like, that is awful. That is everything that a talent management company should not do or should not be. G. Sanju is one company. There are other companies that have been basically popping up in the controversy wing as well, too. One of those companies was Wachter, who- <laughs> Yeah, I told- I told- <laughs> I told Muda about Wachter and he was just like, no. No, this isn't real. <laughs> I told him about it. Oh, God, dude. Who ended up basically, uh, you know, rebranding themselves to something known as 910 Incorporated. Yeah, the 910 sexual abuse lawsuits that they got. And they, they made that their name. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke. And they've had their own, you know, series of controversies as well. 
You know, even if you look at the virtual YouTuber wiki with like sources and everything. Yeah, they've got situations where they've alleged to have been doxing their own talent, which- Alleged? Alleged? Listen, I am all for putting allegedly in all of your words and all of your sentences so you don't get sued, but they fucking put their talent's docs on Twitter. Their talent left and they were mad and they were like, okay. And then they just posted their real name on Twitter. Um, that, that, like, allegedly, obviously, of course, allegedly. Again, that's great uh, if that actually has happened. Not really, just because- That was sarcasm, like, don't cancel Muda. Like, you shouldn't be doing that as a VTuber agency. A lot of these people want to be anonymous. Alleged it is a cheat code. Yeah, dude, that guy, allegedly, serial murderer, rapist, pedophile. If you end up, like, allegedly leaking out contractual information that has their first and last name, congratulations, you took away the only thing, arguably the biggest thing, the biggest reason they even chose to be a faceless YouTuber on the internet, right? Good now, point. of course, this is the whole situation. Also, there were so many uh, allegations of Wachter, um forcing their talent to sleep with managers, forcing them to do extra content and extra time, sexual content that they weren't comfortable with. Like, bro, the, the like, Wachter is, you think Niji Sanji's bad? Niji Sanji's just big, which is why you heard of it. Wachter, I covered Wachter in a video like a week ago. Fuck, bro. Situation you can dive into. There are some serious, serious allegations uh, that, again, I'm not gonna be diving into just because obviously that's not really something that I talk about on my channel. It's not really something that I go into. I'm more interested in the abusiveness of workplace staff in terms of taking advantage of them financially yeah, and basically ruining them. Bro, and Blizzard just got sat down. Niji Sanji just little broed Blizzard. And, their, and, and the company itself when they handle these public relations in such a dirty, stupid manner. But yeah, honestly, uh, I, I think I think being put on a hit list is absolutely worth it. Being put on a blacklist for, for, for a VTuber agency And is you know what's even better? The fact that I'm not there. It's even better. Yo, everyone be like, nuts, you fell off, dude. Nuts, you fell off. Best way to fall off, not to end up on hit lists. That's what I'm saying. That just means I have to make more videos. I only made 14 videos on Niji Sanji. And that's not enough. Dude, we are literally on the same page. Literally on the same page here. I have never been in such agreement with the people that didn't put me on the hit list before in my entire life. Let me just make sure I'm making, uh, I made a full 14 videos. Like the way I see it, oh, my, my mouse just died. Good thing I have a second mouse right next to my computer. I'm such a genius. Um, anyway, dude, we have to make sure that I actually, I should make a playlist, a full playlist of all the, uh, the Niji Sanji videos that I've made. All right, let's, we just have to see. This is just for, for, for research sake. I have to know. All right, so it all started with, with, where's my first Niji? This one. All right, that's Niji Sanji video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, <laughs> uh, ten. This was the Wacter video, so still ten, still ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. I mean, that's sort of Niji Sanji. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll count it. Fourteen, uh, fifteen. Sixteen Niji Sanji videos, ladies and gentlemen, and it's not even getting old a little. <laughs> At least according to me is ultimately okay in my books because a it's not like it's not like this is my business it's not like i'm a vtuber myself <laughs> and i dodged it and i dodged it bro i lit i'm not even exaggerating i got over a i got millions of views on niji sanji dude it's crazy i'm clearly a fat indian guy on the internet face and all so for me it's not a big deal <laughs> if it is to self-deprecate all the time the vtubers get a little bit angry at me but i think what's important don't is worry mutahar i'm not angry at you raising a stink and making people aware that companies like this exist so if you do ever feel inclined to sign up for a company like this, it may make you do more research and choose to sign up with yeah. actual good companies that exist out there. There are I good agree. VTuber organizations. There are good talent companies out there. It's just very true. few and far between, okay? Very true. I, I, I Very, very true. I wish Niji Sanji was a complete outlier in this space and it's the only bad one. It's not. It's not. <laughs> At least 80% of them want to take advantage of you. So well, that's, a, that's a good metric. Yep. 80%? Yeah, it sounds about right. Sounds about right. 80%. Mm, yeah. So, bottom line is, don't get taken advantage of. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Listen, guys, to anyone watching this, I have advice for you. Don't get mugged, don't get raped, and don't get taken advantage of. That is all. Don't join an organization that could care less about you, that literally, you. if you put years of your life into, and the moment you get terminated, all they have to say is negligible. Financially, we're going to be fine. Our stock price is going to be okay. <laughs> that is a company that literally is evil. Actual evil. Is worse than Satan themselves, okay? I would rather sign a fucking deal with the devil, all right? If the devil- You did. It's called the YouTube Terms of Service. Devil showed up to my house, you know, with the red horns and all that, you know, <laughs> naked with the pitchfork, gave me a contract and said, hey, it's either this or, or Niji or Sanji. Niji Sanji, you bet I'd be whipping out the ballpoint pen. I'd be writing my first, middle, last name, initials, blood type. <laughs> and I'd be like, here you go, Satan. You're a lot better than the other guy. <laughs> God damn. And he wonders why he's on the hit list. But yeah, if you feel ever unhinged to write a blacklist hit list about people that have criticized a faceless company that could care less. I would never do something like <laughs> I would never do something like that as a psyop to make them look stupider. <laughs> I would never do that. If you died today, they wouldn't even fly out. They wouldn't even private jet and piss on your burning body. <laughs> that yeah, it'd be pretty stupid to do that unless it was a psyop. That level of parasocial connection is never healthy. Never sign up for that. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, guys, don't don't fall in love with companies. Like, god damn it, god damn it, don't do that. It's stupid. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, I wanted Muda. to make a little goofy video. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Like it, Just like it if you dislike it. I am out. Dude, this man saw himself on a hit list and saw dollar signs and a new video. Like, holy shit, that title just made itself. I got put on a hit list. That title literally writes itself. Dude, next time there's like a big drama going on, I'm going to remind me to make a hit list and put Muda on it. Like, even if he had nothing to do with it, like uh, freaking new, new freaking, I don't know, drama just dropped everybody. It's crazy. New hit list comes out. I'm going to put Muda on it preemptively. Like, remind me for, for the next hit list. Um, to do that. I think I'm going to start making, um, PSYOP hit lists on everything that goes on, just so that, um, in the future, it diminishes the meaning of hit lists. You know how, like, if, if everything gets a hit list, no hit lists are special, right? If everything's a hit list, then nothing's a hit list. Like, dude, we, we gotta start doing this. We gotta start disseminating all the weapons of the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> By making them all just look so pathetic and stupid. Genshin hit list! Yo, I have to make a Genshin hit list. You're so right. You're so right. I'll just put, like, all the Genshin community guys on it and Mudahar. Fog, yeah. Dude, that's so smart. Anyway, um, stay weird, fam. If you made it to the end, click one of these two videos, which also will definitely get me canceled. See you live on Game. Stay weird, fam.